We've just had the first snow flurry of the season and I'm in the studio pine needle coiling some gourds. I thought you might like to learn how I do it. I think pine needle coiling is the first rim treatment that I learned how to do and it is surprisingly easy and surprisingly a lot of people ask how to do it. Well, I'm going to break it down. It's very, very simple. And if it's your first gourd, you'll be very pleased with the results. And just a side note, um, when I started recording this video this morning, I checked out my YouTube analytics and saw that I just made 2,000 subscribers. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for thumbs upping and subscribing and sharing with people. And uh, that's how we learn is sharing, and I'm really excited to be able to do these videos, and that's just showing me that you're enjoying them. So thank you, thank you, thank you. To begin with, you need a gourd that is already finished. So that means any paints, dyes, pyrography, carving, and inside, cleaned, all finished, also with um, whatever spray sealer you want to use. Um, all that needs to be done before you start working on the rim. This gourd I did with a faux raku finish and then I finished it with a matte Krylon spray. If you're interested in the uh, raku, faux raku finish, let me know in the comment section. I may do a video on that in the future if there is interest. In addition to having your gourd be finished, you also need to have some holes drilled in the rim of your gourd. Now these holes are a half an inch apart and they're round about an eighth an inch from the edge of the rim. They don't need to be exact um, go from the rim, but you want them pretty close. On most gourds, you can make the hole just pushing an awl through the gourd, or you can also use a small drill bit. You just want it uh, large enough to fit through your needle and thread. For this project, I am using Irish waxed linen thread. Um, this is four ply um, black. You could also use waxed imitation sinew or any other kind of wax thread. Alternatively, if you have a thread that you would like to use and it's not waxed, you can take a little chunk of beeswax and just run it through. You just want it to be a little bit sticky so that it holds together. And other things you're going to need is a needle. Now this needle is, uh, well, it's a little bit bent up, but it has a little bit of a larger eye and it has a slightly uh, dull tip on the end. It's not quite a tapestry needle. Those are a little bit bigger. But um, if you go to the sewing section of your craft store and look around, just find one that has a little bit of a larger eye so that your waxed cord will go through. And you'll also need a small pair of scissors. And last but not least, your pine needles. So these are long leaf pine needles. They are averaging about um, between 12 and 14 inches long. These are, um, they have been treated with glycerin, so it makes them very flexible. Now, they don't have to be treated with glycerin. If you uh, do not have your needles treated, that's fine. What you can do is just soak them for a few hours before you begin it, and you can work with them damp, just not dripping. Now, I'm not going to give you instructions on how to treat your needles, but you can do them yourself. It's very simple to do. And if you search for it on YouTube, you will find several different people who are teaching you how to treat your needles. They're all very good tutorials, so I would suggest taking a look at them and um, following those instructions. The first thing you want to do is determine where you want to start your coil. Now on a gourd like this one, it doesn't really matter where I start it, but if you have a gourd where you have an image on one side and you want that to be the front of the gourd, what I suggest is to start on the, one of the sides. Because I'm right-handed, I am going to be working from left to right. And I'm going to start in this hole right here. I'm just kind of picking a random hole here. And I'm going to pull this. I like to work from the outside in. Some people like to work from the inside out. 
for me, I like to be able to see what I'm doing and I don't want to be futzing around inside trying to find where the, uh, the hole is on the inside. So I work from the outside in and I'm going to pull this almost the whole way. I want to leave a good sized tail to use for tying. I'm going to lay my first pine needle down. I want to make sure that it overlaps a little bit with the hole before it. And then I want to keep that consistent throughout that the tip of it will lay um, right below the hole before it. And what I'm going to do is tie this on. Which is much easier to do if I'm holding it against myself, which I find is much easier if you lean it up against yourself, holding it in your lap. And I just did one overhand knot and I'm just going to do another one like so. And there you go. Just like that. Holds it nice and secure. And I want to make sure that this knot is kind of laying across the top of the rim like this. This will be hidden as you work and you go around a second time. So let's look at that again. You can see the knot is laying on top and your, the needle is uh, secure and just laying underneath the hole before it. Now what I'm going to do is take another needle and do the same thing. I'm going to lay it so that it's the end of it is just underneath the one before. I'm going to hold that secure. And I'm going to go right in there. that through. Now this little tail can be worked right into and stitched into your coil and that way that is hidden. And now I'm going to add another one the same way. Just going around. And you can go into your hole once or twice. If you go in twice, you can have a V. In fact, I think I have changed my mind about this. I, since this is early on, I'm going to undo this. I'm going to go back and do these as a V the whole way around. Going into the hole once or twice is just a personal preference, but I figure I'll do it both ways. But I think I'm going to stick with the V stitch here. Now I'm not going to worry about a V stitch for the very first um, pine needle because when you'll see as I come around a second time, that first stitch I made is really going to be hidden and the next one is going to be laying over top of it. So I'm not really going to worry about that one right now. And I'll just add this third one in here. And as you see, I'm just going in once. And just got to watch the tangles. Just keep a firm grip on your needles. Once. And then your second time through will make the V. like so. Let me work up a few more of these and you can see what that looks like. They are really just done the same way. I'm going to be doing the same stitch, the same method, 
all the way around through every hole until I get to the beginning stitch. So what I'm going to do is continue working on this off camera because otherwise you'll just have to watch me do every single one and it will get kind of dull. You get the idea. The only thing that would change is if I run out of thread and I will show you when that happens what I do when I run out of thread. If I run out of thread I might have enough to make it the whole way but I'm pretty sure I won't. Um, and also what you do once you get back to this beginning stitch. Okay here we are so far. I made it about a little more than halfway before I ran out of thread. Now when I say run out, I still have a little bit here to work with, but I already removed the needle because I want to have enough to tie on my new piece. So I just use a little clothespin to keep that secure while I um, am getting the next piece of thread ready. So this is my new thread that I cut. And what I like to do, especially when I'm doing the V-stitch, is I like to use the old thread just to do the first part of the V-stitch. And now I'm going to go in with my new thread. And I'm going to pull that most of the way through and leave a tail that I will use to tie on the old piece. But I'm not going to tie it just yet. What I'm going to do here is just lay it over and hold it here very tightly. I'm going to give this a nice firm tug and hold that very tightly. And I'm going to add my next needle. Pull that through. Still holding it good and firm. Pull that tight. I'm going to add another needle after this just to make sure that it is held good in there. So there's this one. I'll do one more. Okay, I did one more and I'm just going to hold this together with the clothespin. And here is my, my loose piece right here. Let's see if we can get the light on there a little better. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a double overhand knot as close to the inside as close to this inside hole as possible. And if I pull it tight enough, it'll kind of hide underneath that little roll of pine needles. Because as you work, you see, you can see the rim here, but if you are following along and if you are working on your own gourd, you will notice as you work this cluster of pine needles, is going to start rolling over and into the gourd a little bit. And we are at the point where this is starting to overhang a little bit. So if you can tie it good and close, that will be hidden. I'm going to just try to do this while it's on the table. This is another one of those things that's easiest to do if you're holding it in your lap. And I want to get that good and tight. And then give it one more. Right up against it. Pull it good and tight. Now, I am going to leave these. Now, if you see, you can see it in there. But I'm going to leave these for now. Later on, I'm going to take these and I'm going to um, use the needle to just weave them in through um, a couple of these stitches and then snip them off. 
All right, now I am down at the last hole and I just wanna show you how I will add my last needle and get this to blend in really nicely. So um, I just wanna make sure that all this is kinda of out of the way. And I wanna put my needle right in here between my first needle and this last one. So of course I wanna stick that a little, out a little bit <clears throat> so it's under the previous hole. And I wanna make sure that this whole clump, including my newest needle, is laying on top of the needles to the right, my first needles that I inserted. So I'm gonna go in here, of course here's the hole is right above that first needle, if you remember. So sometimes you gotta have to kind of scoot it out of the way to get it in there. Okay, pull that tight. Now, I have all this extra bit. Now, what am I gonna do with this? Well, if you were to look at this, of course, we only have a few needles here, and then as we go around, we have a lot more. So we're actually going to use all these needles. We're not gonna snip any off unless it's necessary at the very end, but we're just gonna keep coiling all the way around. And this is gonna kind of blend in and make raise this up a little bit so that it looks even all the way around. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to keep doing what I was doing before. And remember I said, you're not actually gonna see this. This is, Remember I wasn't gonna to need to do a V stitch here because you, you were not really gonna see it. Well, now you are. So what I'm gonna do is go right into that same hole, pull that tight, and do the V-stitch now. And you can't even really see where I first put that needle in. It, all, it blends right in, and that is how I am going to continue adding or not adding any needles, I'm sorry. Um, I'm just gonna continue fastening this in. I'm just gonna continue stitching the ends of these pine needles in, going into each hole twice. If it gets a little too tough to pull, sometimes uh, pliers will help. And I'm gonna snip this. Sometimes you get a little ugly bit off a needle. And so I'm just gonna snip that off right here. So just be careful that when you pull it through that you're not damaging these needles that you already put in. But see how that just blends right in, blends right in really nicely. Okay, so now I'm at a point where I need to make a decision if I wanna snip any of these loose pieces off. At this point, um, the only, it's only going to add bulk right to about here and then not so much. It kind of straggles off. So um, what I do is I just kind of hold it with my fingers and see what it's going to look like there. And I can decide whether or not I want to continue this the whole way to the end or do I wanna snip some and maybe work them behind? Okay, so at this point, I'm getting close to the end here. 
I also have not much thread left and I really don't want to add any more. Um, but the bulk of the um, ends of the needles have already been put in and I'm left with a few of these scragglers. One of these is a very unhealthy looking end. So some of these I am just going to snip off and what I'm going to do is just kind of taper them on an angle. Now I don't want to just snip them all off all together, you know, in one clump. I want to kind of do them one at a time and um, not all the same length because I don't want this to come to an end too abruptly. So see, I'm kind of varying the lengths a little bit. And I also just kind of want to work this around and hoping I have enough thread to finish this to do three. It'll be three more. Let's see if I can make it work. And I could not make it work. Actually, my, my thread is just short. So um, I just snipped off these extra little bits, which was just about um, about that much I had to snip off. So what I'm going to do with this end bit is come in here and I'm just going to scoot my needle down to really make the most of what I have here. And I am going to, let's see if we can get a good amount of light in here. And I'm going to scoot my needle right through there, see? Pull that through. And I'm gonna do it again. Scoot my needle through, okay. And uh, I'm going to see if I can get that through the loop. Get that through the loop and pull it. And now I have it knotted down at the bottom. And see if I can do that one more time. And I'm gonna have to lose the needle here a second. Push that through with my fingers. And there we go. Now what I'm going to do is take a tiny bit of glue. And this is a, a Loctite Super Glue Gel. And I'm just going to put a tiny dot of glue on top of there. Just to make sure, sorry, that was out of the camera. Um, right in there, right on top of the knot, just to make sure that that is not gonna come out. All right, the last thing to show you is what I do with these extra tails um, from when I added a new piece of thread. So here these are, remember I did not snip them yet because uh, I wanted to show you how I normally deal with them. And the reason why I keep them kind of long is so that I have enough to work with to um, re-thread a needle into that. And what I do is, let's see if I can get this good and close. Okay. So what I do is I first just try to get right underneath the closest thread. Let me pull that through, I'm going this direction. And then I'm gonna do it again at this 
Ooh, see if I can see here. This guy. So since I do stitch fairly tight, I just have to be real careful. There we go. There's one. So even if you get it at the top, you can still pull it down and guide that thread down to the bottom. Okay, so you see how whoop, you can see how that is this is where the thread came out of. It went under here and then under here. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this one, but go under this one and under this one. Pull in that direction. That we can get rid of the needle. And then just take those two ends, pull them tight. Make sure that that's down in there. Down in the bottom. You can just kind of use your thumbs to make sure that they, the threads are in there. And then, then I just snip it close on the other side too. Just take this little bit and snip it close. And then I will do the same thing for this last end piece um, that, I, that I put that little dot of glue in there for. And here is the finished gourd. I am happy with the way this turned out. It's very simple to do, and yet it gives such an elegant finish to your gourd. Um, and this is only one way to do a pine needle rimmed gourd. This is probably the simplest one you can do. And uh, if you are interested in learning how to do some other types of pine needle coiled gourds um, using uh, more coils and even some wild ones where it twists around, that's a lot of fun to do, uh, let me know in the comments. And once again, if you're interested in doing this faux raku finish, let me know that in the comments too. And that just helps me to know uh, how to plan which videos to do next. Thank you for subscribing and sharing, and I wish you all the very best. Happy gourding.